You're listening to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast with your host, Letitia Ringe, and this is episode number 33. Welcome to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I'm Letitia Ringe and I am a life coach originally from Australia, now based in London, and I help my clients who tend to be women through periods of transition, whether that be in their life, business, career or relationships. And together we go on a journey to discover what their truth is and how they can express that truth in a way that honors their power, purpose, and feels great to them. Each week on the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast, I am sharing here the teachings and conversations with people who are creating awesome things in the world, and we discuss how they got to where they are, their advice for finding purpose, well-being, running a business, creativity, and lifestyle to inspire, empower, and support you listening on your journey to uncovering your truth and purpose. Before we get started, i just love for you to take a moment right now to enter into this space. Maybe you want to take a few moments to do some breath work, some beautiful, loving breaths in through your nose and out through your nose. In through your nose and sighing out any tension you've picked up from your day. Really just letting it all melt away and enjoying this time for yourself to really feel inspired, to get you thinking about things that are going to support you and to just enjoy this part of the day this beautiful space that we're creating together for you. And with that, welcome to today's episode. Today is a solo episode and I'll be sharing more about my journey to becoming a life coach, what a life coach does, why I decided to become a life coach, why I decided to train as a life coach, what my experience was like training with the Beautiful You Coaching Academy and who I see life coaching as a career for, signs you're a secret life coach and what my day-to-day looks like. And finally, some misconceptions, some common misconceptions about life coaching that I'd love to just clear up. The intention behind today's episode other than, of course, to inspire, empower and support you on your journey to uncovering truth and purpose is to shine a beautiful light on this industry, the life coaching industry, to give some more information for those who want to know more and for those who might be a perfect fit to work in the industry to spark or reflect that beautiful light within you. I also want to let you know that before each episode, I usually, before my interviews, pull a card from uh, my goddess guidance oracle cards, Doreen Virtue. I just love all of these, you know, really beautiful, strong women and the messages they have So usually I pull one of these before every interview, but I've now decided to treat it slightly differently and to now pull one before every episode and to really tune in to what we all need to hear, what is right for all of us. So my intention before I pick a card, which is just a really beautiful tool to help us connect with our own intuition, my intention was for us, that this card I would pull would be for us and what we needed to hear. So I've pulled the card and it's absolutely perfect as they always are. And I'll be revealing what the card is at the end of today's episode. Okay, 
So coming up next week on the podcast, I'm also excited to announce that Julie Parker, the founder and CEO of the Beautiful You Coaching Academy, will actually be on the podcast. I've already recorded it. It was a fabulous conversation. So beautiful, so inspiring. And whether you're interested in becoming a life coach or not, you will find this powerful woman both expansive and inspiring. Before we get into today's episode, I also have a couple more exciting announcements before we dive in. The first is that I now have And if you're on my beautiful newsletter list in that beautiful community, you'll have received an email about this. I now have a brand new page on my website. It's located at www.letisharinge.com forward slash become a coach. And if you go to my homepage, you'll see there in the navigation menu, the page become a coach. And this is for those aspiring coaches, because I know... I work with many aspiring coaches um, in my you know, coaching. Also, I know I have many in my community and a lot of people contact me about the Beautiful You Coaching Academy or working as a coach. And also a lot of people contact me to find out more about what it even is. So I've put together a page that will be a little hub for those considering working as a coach and I will keep adding to it. The Beautiful You Coaching Academy, I also want to let you know, has just announced their enrollment dates for 2019. Their February 2019 intake is already quickly filling up. If you're like me, I had to wait five months before my intake started. And I'm lucky enough to be able to offer to my community a really generous bonus when you enroll for the Beautiful You Coaching Academy life coaching course through me. This bonus will give you the opportunity to work with me for free over three months. And you can find all of those details also on this new page on my website, Become a Coach, which again is letisharinge.com forward slash become a coach. So if after listening to this episode or reading what I've got there, if you've got more questions, I'm so happy to have a chat with you. Just send an email to Letitia at LetitiaRinge.com. And if you don't know how to spell my name, it's L-E-T-I-C-I-A and Ringe is spelled ring with an E on the end. That's the easiest way to explain it. <laughs> so Letitia at LetitiaRinge.com. I'd love to hear from you. I always love to hear from, uh, well, I love to hear from any of you, especially people listening to the podcast or a part of the um, my beautiful email community. But I also really love to hear from life coaches or people who want to be life coaches because I know that if you're being, feeling called to this work, it's for a reason. Okay, I also want to let you know that you can also find some helpful videos that I'll be adding to my YouTube channel, Create a Life That is Beautiful TV, uh, which I recently launched. If you want to find that, it's probably best to go to the homepage on my website and you'll be able to find a link to the YouTube channel, Create a Life That is Beautiful TV there. Now, I also want to let you know that my online course, Embrace Your Feminine Essence, will be reopening soon this September. I'm just in the middle of making the finishing touches to the updated 2.0 version and moving the course also to a new platform. So a few of you have already joined the waitlist. Thank you so much. I can't wait to work with you if you do decide to enroll when the time comes to enroll. But if you want to keep updated with when enrollment will open, you can head to LetitiaRinge.com forward slash E-Y-F-E, which is just a little beautiful shortening of Embrace Your Feminine Essence and pop your name on the wait list that you'll find there. Finally, I want to give a shout out to Ms. E. Ryder for the beautiful review you left over on iTunes for the podcast. She said, 
I love listening to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. Letitia is fantastic at interviewing and always discuss the most interesting topics and has guests that really align well with the show. I always find so many useful takeaways when I listen. Thank you so much, beautiful. It just really makes my heart light up when I read these beautiful reviews that you're leaving. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to know that the episodes are supporting you and doing what they're intended to do. And of course, when you leave a review, this also helps spread the word about the podcast. And I really love that it's spreading organically to the right people who can use it. If you haven't yet left a review on iTunes, I would love it if you did. Just please send me an email as well or a DM on Instagram at create a life that is beautiful when you do. So I know who you are and I can say thank you. If you aren't listening to the podcast on iTunes or you can't seem to leave a review, I know it can be a little confusing. Just send me a message anyway and let me know what your thoughts are, if you're loving it, and perhaps I might just pop your review on my website. You never know. (laughs) Okay, well, without further ado, let's dive in to today's episode. So to get started, I want to just give a little explanation about what a life coach does, because I know that there is some confusion about what it even is. I know that there was for me before I worked with a life coach and before I moved into the industry. So basically, a life coach helps move a person from A to B, usually the client has some sort of goal or they've got some sort of dream or somewhere that or something that they really want to embody in their life. So with a coach and through a life coaching program, what you'll do is help move your client from where they are to where they want to be. This goes for all sorts of areas in a person's life and specific issues. What's really beautiful about what a life coach does is that you can work on a whole number of different areas in your life, or you might work with a coach on a specific issue. So some coaches will be more of a generalist, just like with a lawyer, actually, and like with many other professions, and others will really be focused on a specific issue. So they'll specialize. And this is great because often, even if you are focusing on a specific issue, you'll definitely touch on other areas anyway, because there's so much that goes into, you know, we could, we just can't simply compartmentalize our life. But basically you might have a coach who helps you with your spirituality You might have a coach that helps you with your creativity. You might have a coach who helps you with your relationships. That could be romantic. It could be friendships. It could be relationships with colleagues, any relationship, conscious communication. You could have a coach that helps you, yes, with your voice, with communicating your truth. You might have a coach who helps you with your business or your career. You might have a coach that helps you with your own self-love practice or with your mindset, building a supportive mindset. And in my opinion, you'll be working on that with any coach you work with anyway. So there are tons of issues. You could also work with a coach on your body image. You know, some coaches will even help people. I know we've had examples of people who have um, coached people to say run a marathon, even though, you know, they're not a personal trainer or, or, or a running coach, nothing like that. It's just that a lot of what stops us from actually achieving what we want in life are our own fears. And so when we've got someone who is holding that space for us, which In next week's episode with Julie Parker, she talks about this as well, which so definitely listen to that episode because it's really beautiful. But yes, you're holding this space for another person to really step up into the life that they want to create for themselves. And just by having this space held for you, this is super empowering. Because when you think about it, there's not many places in your life where you have that with someone, 
where you have someone that is solely dedicated to you and to helping you fulfill your dreams and vision that you have for yourself. And when you've got someone sitting there across from you, whether that's through a computer or in person or through an email, and you know that they are rooting for you, you know, they believe in you, they see your power, they see the vision that you've created for yourself. One, you've started the process for manifesting that and bringing it into action because when we tell people our dreams, that really helps us to actually bring them into what reality. And two, you start to really believe in yourself and that it's possible. Some of those doubts go away. You know, it's like with groupthink, right? It's really easy for people to be influenced when they're in a group. And so you'll all come to a consensus. And then after you might think, geez, how did that even happen? It's not even what I thought. But you feel so confident because you've got the group, the collective behind you. When you're with a coach and you've got that energy, you know, it's the energy of a group, right? Even if it's just the two of you, you also get influenced by that. It's really beautiful. But of course, this is what's so important because your coach needs to be able to hold that space for you, but without influencing your decision. So it's still coming from within you, which is something I'm going to discuss about more at the end of this episode with common misconceptions. Now, when you work with a coach, you're also focused on the present and on the future. So where am I now and where do I want to be? There is little focus, although there will be some mention of the past. And this is the difference between life coaching and therapy. And this is something we discuss in a lot of detail with Julie in our next episode, because Julie actually worked in the counseling arena before she moved into life coaching. So she's a really wonderful person to actually explain to us what the difference is. Now, a life coach will be, of course, a great listener, They'll be encouraging and they'll also help you with strategy. So how can we help you move from A to B? They won't be dictating the strategy to you. It's something that you'll come up with together, but together you'll come up with a strategy. And so how much more powerful is that when you've got, you know, two minds behind it, helping you move forward, that feeling of support is so helpful and it's so important and I think for women, it's really, it it like sparks something that's been lying dormant within us because connection and sisterhood and community for women is really important. And it's how we've, it's basically the way we've been functioning for centuries and we've become more isolated, maybe in, I don't know, like the, I don't know how many decades, but we've become more isolated. And so When you go into a coaching relationship, you really feel something sparked within you and it feels really natural, actually. So I like to think of it as well as it's like having a personal trainer, but for your mind. And of course, there are so many different types of life coaches. You'll have ones who are more, you know, energetic and more about accountability and doing the work and, you know, They'll be more, I guess, rah-rah, but then you'll have other coaches who are more easeful, flowing, you know, you're deciding what's next. They'll be more hands off. And so it's, you just got to find the right person to work with. So a coach is helping their clients up-level their life and chase their dreams or not chase their dreams, realize their dreams. And of course, that is such a beautiful thing to be doing and to be working with, whether you're a coach or a client. So what's it like working with a coach? Well, usually you'll have a specific period that you'll work together. You'll have, you'll set some specific intentions or goals to focus on throughout the period that you're working together. Examples could be finding a meaningful career that lights up your soul. (laughs) One of my faves could be around dating, you know, attracting a beautiful, loving, genuine partner, getting a promotion, running a marathon, 
improving your body image, self-love, mindset, starting a business that really comes from the heart, showing up in your business, reducing overwhelm, connecting to your cycle for the ladies, developing your connection to your intuition. I mean, there are so many different goals and careers. It really could be anything, absolutely anything. And I always like to think, and I say this on my coaching page, you know, high performing people in the sports field, they will always have a coach. And so, and that's to help them, you know, live and play whatever it is that they're playing at this high level. So if that's what we do in sport, why wouldn't we do that in our life as well? It's so easy for us to second guess ourselves and also not to see truly what our gifts are. You know, we're too close to all of the detail. So we need someone who can mirror that power, those gifts, and have the the perspective, the broader perspective. And that's why it's such a beautiful role being a coach. So it's very helpful for people to work with a coach during times of transitions. Like, for instance, you're going through your Saturn return, (laughs) making the leap to starting a business. Perhaps you've got your upper limit at play because you're doing something different or you're stepping out in a new way after a breakup or a divorce. I mean, I wish I had this knowledge now when I was working as a family lawyer because I would have told every single client I worked with, I think you need a coach (laughs) to help them through that phase. You know, of course, obviously as well, perhaps a therapist is really helpful during that time. But to help you move forward, yeah, a coach would be so helpful and That's what I like to think that I was in some ways for my clients. So, of course, as well, if you're stepping up into a new career, you you know, you're making a career transition, it's helpful. If you're starting a new relationship, I think for many people, when they'll come to coaching, maybe when they feel at a loss, they don't really know what the next step is or, or they need some clarity. That's really helpful. But when we've actually got what we wanted, when we get the thing that we thought we wanted, I also think it's really helpful to work with someone then because that's when our upper limit is most likely to come into play. We like to, you know, self-sabotage. So to avoid that, we, you have this container, this space held for you, this vision held for you. And when you see that reflected in you and your coach, when you're reminded of that, It's so powerful. You believe in it because you see it before you in the eyes of someone else rather than just in your own mind. And we dismiss it as, oh, you know, it's just a fantasy. I'm not deserving of this. I'm not worthy of it. All the things we tell ourselves. And and don't worry if you're listening to this and you're like, that is so me. It's so normal. We all do this. So don't worry. And this is why It's just so helpful to have someone to help us through all of that because we are so programmed to think in this way. Now, if you want some more information about what it's like working with a coach, you might like to check out some of the beautiful testimonials that I've got on my coaching page and on my testimonials page on my website. Those are there, well, one, so that you know that I work with people, but two, to help you understand through the perspective of a client what it is like working with a coach. And and of course, these are specific to working with me, but yes, working with a coach, because really it is quite, it's a relatively new industry. So there is, I think, a lot of confusion about what actually happens and, and why you need it and why it's worth investing in and all of that. So feel free to go and check that out at LetitiaRinge.com forward slash coaching or forward slash testimonials. Now, why I became a coach. Now, the reason I wanted to explain this to you today is one for people who are like, why, what, what calls you to becoming a coach? Why do you do that? And also for those of you who I know are listening to this right now and you're 
kind of curious. And you're curious probably for the same reason I was and and am and remain curious. So I became a life coach because I literally had something sparked within me. I was trying to search and and if you go back to earlier episodes, especially probably episode number one, you'll hear how I talk about the struggle I went to to finding my own purpose. And But what I was really chasing is I wanted to be passionate and I was really passionate always about wanting to help people and wanting to make a difference in the world. That has been a really clear intention of mine throughout my whole life. And I think that's because I was someone who saw a lot of injustices. I saw a lot of struggle during my childhood and experienced a lot of struggle. And I have always had, I guess, a bit of a nurturing tendency to me. I loved looking after, you know, kids who were younger than me. I loved, you know, looking after my Barbies and my dolls, like they were babies and teaching them. But I had this nurturing quality and this wanting to protect people and for fairness and for, yeah, really seeing the best in people. I could always really feel and understand how others were feeling. And so I wanted to be someone that helped people, especially who couldn't see their own light. And I thought that I really wanted to work at one stage with um, juveniles, people who, you know, kids who had ended up um, maybe in the foster system or in jail. I really wanted to work with those people for some time, which is why I started off studying psychology. And then... And then that shifted and then I was working with people in family law and who were going through one of the most emotionally difficult times of a person's life when they break up with someone who they thought that they would spend their life with and you know they've and this isn't just if you've been married but if you've been in a long-term relationship you know you've got rights to each other's um, you might have kids as well but you also have built a life together so you've got rights you've all your uh, property is intermingled and So I've always had this thing about family and love, I guess, and the individual. So, but I just, I could never find what I, where the passion was until, as you'll know, if you've been following, following me along this journey, I began to get really, really feel quite depressed and anxious because I was basically working and not looking after myself and I well, hadn't gotten to know myself. I hadn't spent enough time turning within. I was just sort of proving myself. And suddenly going through my own journey of trying to feel better, I stumbled along self-development and my passion was ignited. And really it was always there because, you know, I did. I almost finished a psychology degree. I remember when I was 21, yes, 21, going to America and spending my last week in New York. I bought a Dr. Phil book. I was by myself and I can't remember what the book was called, but I read it and went through doing all of the exercises and just like loved it, but also found it really, really hard to come to terms with it things that had happened. And so then I eventually parked it on the side, but I did that for that whole week. That's what I was doing. So it was always there. And I, and I also liked astrology as a kid. I, well, I loved astrology and crystals, which is fun. Um, and, but really I, I believed in support and I loved throughout all the different jobs I've had, you know, as a lawyer in retail or when I was working as a career consultant, I loved the connecting with people, especially the one-to-one. I loved that in-depth, personal, meaningful conversation, really getting to know a person and why they or how they were, the way they were. Like everybody has a story. And, you know, this is my motivation behind the podcast too, because it's really fun to hear stories from, you know, huge names in, in the world. But It's also really inspiring to hear a story from anyone. Every single person has a story that is worth sharing and that is inspiring to listen to because we all go through our own personal struggle and learnings and there is so much we can take away by understanding 
another person's journey. It's truly just, I think, one of the greatest gifts in life. And so I always love connecting with people, but on this deeper level and what I found in a lot of my other roles was that I wasn't, the, you know, I never really had time for small talk. I wasn't good at that, but I was good at these in-depth conversations. And I was someone that, well, I've always been someone that my friends would turn to if they had these deeper issues to talk about. And if they wanted to get deep, you know, that I would be the person to have the conversation with. So I've always been empathetic and I love to talk about feelings, just like beautiful Sammy Fleming, who we had previously on the podcast. Unfortunately, I can't remember exactly what episode number it was. Oh, actually, it would be episode number 25. So have a listen. Sammy was one of my trainers in the Beautiful You Coaching Academy, and she talks about how she also always loved talking about feelings. It's really interesting. Have a listen to her episode too, because this might help you if you are considering becoming a life coach. So I would always see the best in people. I wanted to make a difference. I found it easy to understand people, no matter what they'd been through or were doing, if they were you know, not the nicest person. If I knew their story, I could understand them and I could forgive them and I would want to help them get to wherever they wanted to go. I could really see, you know, I understood I'd been there. I'd been through tough times myself and I knew how important and how much I needed and craved, especially as a child, space being held for me, having someone who sees you, who believes in you, who loves you, cares about you. I really, I I knew what that meant and how transformative that would be and how damaging it, it is for us when we don't have that in our life. So I loved learning as well. And when I got to start studying self-development at my own pace, reading all the books, listening to different podcasts and watching different videos, and then I started taking online courses, which was crazy to me because I had really struggled throughout university. I was a natural learner. I loved learning when I was in high school. But when I went into university and studied psychology and then law, I found it really, really difficult to get through that. It was a long process. I chopped and changed. I took time off. I, it was a hard process for me because I was forcing my way through it. But this was different. Suddenly, I couldn't wait to do these online courses Everything was saying yes, I would do them and I would do every single thing in the course, which was so unlike me. Through uni, you know, I found any way I could to just get by, to just get through what I needed to. So I realized that I loved learning again. And I also always saw myself as a teacher. You'll remember when I was as a kid, I used to love to teach my Barbies and my My Little Ponies. I loved to teach my sister. She was such a great student. And I've always loved to teach. I've taken various, you know, trainer or teacher roles throughout my life and career or mentor roles. I've mentored um, different, you know, children from various backgrounds. I've always loved that giving back. You know, you only need to be a few steps ahead of someone to be able to teach them something and actually anyone, you can learn something off everyone. And I really love this. And this is a little phrase that just came through to me the other day. It may, I think it was actually after doing one of my meditations and it was, I learned to teach and I teach to learn. I think that is so true and so important. We need to look at ourselves as lifelong students. No matter where you are, no matter what you're teaching, you're still open to learning because otherwise you don't deepen your knowledge. You don't continue to really, you know, every time you look at something, you will find another layer if you're growing, right? If you're growing and evolving because our perspective changes all the time. And when we teach, we learn that material again. I mean, just doing Embrace Your Feminine Essence, which I say is something that I really felt just came through me. It came out of nowhere. And then it was so, just so obvious. And I literally just wrote out the whole course outline in one session. And then, and I had all of the topics, you know, 
and the subtopics and exactly and then I just just allowed it it took over my life really it did and as I've gone back to prepare you know for the 2.0 version I'm like oh my gosh I'm learning so much this is really coming from another place and you learn and you deepen every single time which is why I also really love that with a lot of these online courses that you get to do with personal development that you get to take them as many times as you want. Most of them have lifetime access as, as does embrace your feminine essence. And you know, any course I do will have that. And it's because you do, you learn again and again and again, and there's things that you miss. And it, I think it's a really part important part of the process. So yes, I've always been interested in human behavior always. And what I loved about being a lawyer and a consultant was the relationships with people and getting to know them and support them. My clients often said to me as a family lawyer that they just couldn't believe how supportive I was and how good I helped them to feel. And that, you know, they really felt that they could call me and speak to me about anything. And that that was really special and rare, even within the industry. And actually maybe of course, within the industry, because it's easy to become desensitized, especially in family law. And look, you've got to have a lot of compassion for people who are in family law, because we deal with some pretty horrendous things. And so that's actually quite traumatic. It it is traumatic. It's like if you work in criminal law as well, And I think for lawyers in general, there is a lot of responsibility put on you and that can be very emotionally draining. And so as a protective mechanism, what we will do is become desensitized. And it's the same as probably with doctors, lots of different professions. You become desensitized to issues as a way to protect yourself against the trauma that you witness and experience with the people that you work with. So that was something that I always had within me, but I found it after years because I worked within the family law team for six years, it started to really drain me in a big way. Uh, And then also when I was working, doing my career consulting for lawyers, I often got the same feedback that they just couldn't believe how much they could speak to me and felt that they could trust me. And we developed these really beautiful relationships and friendships And I really saw that that was where I shone. So that was like, that was the, my zone of genius, the thread that was coming through all of this. And, you know, this is just one aspect of being a coach. There are many things that make a person a good coach. So this was just mine. I had the passion ignited and I really found it so natural to support people and to hold space for them and to be able to see them in their light. So it was a very natural, I guess, next step for me. I knew that I wanted to work in self-development and teach everything that I had used to change my life. And I do go into this in a bit more detail on my Become a Coach page on my website. So I won't repeat myself here. So I decided that I wanted to, but I wanted to be a life coach and I started working with a life coach and I wanted to train as a life coach. Now, why I decided to train. This is the next section. In some ways, I am anti-qualification. And I mean, in general, not with life coaching, in general. So, and this was because after being scarred with studying too many things that I didn't truly enjoy. So I had this like rebellious nature about me. I thought, I don't need to get a qualification. I'll just go in, uh, work in self-development. I didn't want to call myself a coach. I just thought, okay, I just want this to, to happen naturally, organically. However, at the same time, something within me called me to being qualified and I couldn't really understand it. And actually, in fact, this is something that I've really come to understand in a whole new way, only in like the last couple of weeks. <laughs> to really see what it was and to understand why I was called to get that qualification and also to be really thankful that I was and that I trusted that call, even though my ego was really, you know, going, oh, you don't need that because I was just scared. That's all it was. 
So I decided to train because it was calling me. And I, but most of all, the biggest reason at that time that I was aware of was that I knew I needed a community, a community of people who understood the work that I was doing in the space that I was in. Because when you step out into an alternative career, and and I would classify life coaching as an alternative career because it is a fairly new industry. A lot of people don't know about it. Maybe if you live in the USA, it's more well known, but in many other parts of the world, it isn't. And, you know, even my mom, she's trained as a life coach, so but I still wasn't familiar with what it actually was. And so I felt that I needed a community while I made this transition because there would be a lot of fear in the transition. I was prepared for all of that. And having a community to be a part of would help me step up into this business I wanted to create and into this person I was becoming. And also, I really craved connection with people who were interested in the same things as me. I really wanted like-hearted people. And and this is the thing, if you're someone who really is, is craving that too, you know, the best way to make those connections is to pay to do some sort of course, whether it's in person or online, because you make tons of connections with people who are interested in the same thing as you. Like seriously, I cannot believe how many friends I have now that are interested in all of this. And it's really filled a hole that I had. And also it means that I don't expect so much from my, the friends I had before who maybe aren't interested in this, because that's another thing. Then you place expectations on the friends that you've had, which I've definitely been guilty of. So with deciding to train, I did a lot of research and I do go into this on my Become a Coach page. So again, I won't go into it in a lot of detail, but I did a lot of research because I'm based in London. And so I wanted, I thought I wanted something that would be in person or I wanted to at least explore it. I had, however, first heard about the Beautiful You Coaching Academy uh, when I did a course with Jess Lively and she was talking about someone who had been on her show had done the beautiful you coaching course and they had said it was really well aligned with what she teaches on intentions. Now from that moment, I checked out their website and I was, and I loved it, but I still wasn't ready to, to say that I wanted to do coaching to be a life coach. Then when I got to this stage that I knew I needed to train as a life coach and I met someone from the Beautiful You Coaching Academy, I really liked them. I felt really at ease. I thought, okay, this is the community for me. But the actual decision around training was that I felt, okay, I've explored all these options in London. None of them felt right because they were... A lot of the coaching industry is is that corporate, more masculine style of coaching. It is that, you know, we want to, you're going to do everything to get goals. And, and, you know, that has a place as well. I'm not saying anything about that, but that wasn't really my style. I am actually someone who's, because of my own journey of really just, you know, wanting to become a lawyer because that's the goal I had rather than listening to what my body was telling me what my intuition that you know this isn't right this isn't for you this isn't where you want to go you you know you're sad big you know you're sad doing this this isn't you know even though you might be good at it it's not lighting you up and so I ignored that and so for me I'm a really big believer that we need to focus on the present moment and what We are wanting then and constantly checking in. So we have intentions that we set, which is, you know, how we want to live. What and this guides the actions that we take in the present moment. And we can still set goals, but they're coming from this present moment, heart centered place. And so I didn't feel that I would get that from a lot of the courses I was exploring. However, the Beautiful You course, which aligns with this heart-centered intentional way of living embodied that and I also had that confirmed when I spoke to people from the community so I knew that it was really important for me to train and to get this community so that I could step up into this different world 
and, you know, break through my own ego on this. (laughs) Something deeper was calling me to train. Now today, what I've realized is that this calling was even deeper. I needed to train for my clients so that I could be the best coach I could be, so that I could continue to deepen into my coaching experience and also so that they, my client, has confidence in me. Many people, when they look for a coach, they don't actually know them, you know, or maybe they've signed up to your newsletter list for a while, but you don't have a personal connection in a lot of instance, instances. So it's important for the client to have to know that you've got a reputable organization behind you. That's really important. I also now feel that qualifications are important generally to protect the reputation of the industry. Now, I know that this is limited in some ways, and this is why I had this anti-qualification moment, because in whatever industry you're in, you will have people who just shouldn't be there, but they get through, right? They qualify, they get through. And that's whether they've studied law for five years like I had or not. So you'll have people who get through, but they're not, they, they just aren't made for the work, right? No matter what profession it is, you will have people like that. And I also know that there are people who don't train, who are just naturally just meant to do this work. And so I felt, well, I don't want that to be a barrier for them. But for the industry as a whole and as a collective and for our clients and for our own confidence, I do feel that having a qualification is important. And I'm actually really thankful that I followed my gut and I went ahead, even though I was so scared because I was making a big financial investment. I'm so grateful to my past self that I did that. And I was scared that I would lose some of what I wanted to bring to my coaching practice by training. So another thing that it was important for me at that time was to find a program that would be broad enough to allow me to tailor the process or their approach. And again, this is just still like, PS, PTSD after school and university, you know, being very indoctrinated in a particular way. I really didn't want my freedom sort of crushed. The other thing was that when you train, you get a coaching process that you know works. And so I was really attracted to that. And I also wanted the support to help me set up my business. So How did I decide then on the Beautiful You Coaching Academy? Well, like I said, I'd had that connection through Jess Lively. I'd been so attracted to the website when I went. I also actually ended up liking that it was online because I could tune in for all the content in the comfort of my own home and then not have to, you know, have at least an hour to two hours and travel each time I went to a class. Um, And... I also loved that it has this feminine focus to coaching, this heart-centered feminine focus that still focuses on goals, but they're heart-centered goals, right? Present moment focused, intentional, soulful, heart-centered goals. This really resonated. There is a beauty and a softness that emanates from the website and that really touched my heart. I felt that I was at home when I read the website. And I also signed up to their Inspired Coach magazine. So I loved reading those. One of one, something significant that I would recommend for anyone who is listening to this, who wants to train as a coach is that you make sure that it's a, the course is certified by the International Coaching Federation, because that is, you know, the, the recognized international body for coaches and So you want to know that the course has been certified by them. And then also you have the option to become certified with them. Although, you know, it's not necessary that you do that, but you you can. 
And so I think that this is important because who knows what's going to happen with the industry, right? It might become regulated. You might need to have done a coaching qualification at some point in the future. I don't know, but that was important for me. I also really, really liked that the course was affordable. Some of the courses I was looking at in London, for instance, were like £10,000, which is a lot of money. And I know a lot of coaches, you know, in the US as well are super expensive. And so the Beautiful You Coaching Academy was much more affordable for me, like much, much more. So there was just a lot of things, but most of all, intuitively, it was a yes. And I was scared, so scared about the decision, which made me think that maybe I was making the wrong decision. But now I realize it was really just me stepping up into my power. And it's this different fear that we need to distinguish between. And actually, Julie and I discuss this in our next episode. Okay, so a little bit about what I love about Beautiful You course now that I've taken the course and trained and certified as a beautiful you life coach. Well, I'm actually going to record a video for you most likely tomorrow. I've already written a list of everything and there's just, I just keep, oh, that's right. I should talk about that because that's something that I would have liked to have known. But basically this video will go into all the practical aspects to the course. But what I want to mention here is that I really, really, really love the focus of being of the intentional focus of the community, the service focus. Definitely check out Julie's episode so that you can get a feel because obviously she is the CEO and founder. So she is like, you know, leading this. She it, it all comes down to Julie, I think, in a lot of ways. And she's made such great efforts to have a beautiful team around her. But what I, the, the thing that sings out to me most is that, okay, yes, it's allowed me to make a difference and the focus is on that and that's so important, but the focus on community and collaboration over competition is so evident in every interaction you have. Like everybody is focused on quality and service but together supporting each other cross referring each other and there is this real abundance mindset like there is a space for all of us and in fact we need more people coming in to help because we've got work to do there's so many people to help that we can support and we say so we reflect the light within each other and you and, and you become a family I'd always really craved belonging. So this was so important for me. I really wanted a place where I felt like I belonged and I've got that through the Beautiful You Coaching Academy. And also it spans all ages. You know, there are people of all ages in their early 20s. Maybe there's some people younger than that too. And then also, you know, and then you're going into their 30s, 40s, 50s. I don't know how... to to what age we go, but there's literally such a huge, broad span. It's really beautiful to be a part of that because I believe age is just a number and that we really miss out when we're focusing on only hanging out with people who are, are our own age and, or when we judge people who are younger than us, right? You know, it's got nothing to do with it. We've all got experiences that are worth learning from. So I really, really, really love that. And also you get assigned a buddy or you have the option to be assigned a buddy. And this was such a special process because Julie herself selects and or match makes you. And so, I mean, there are so many examples you hear all the time of people just feeling like they were matched with the most perfect person and you get to practice on each other coaching and you obviously then you get to know each other so well and you have this beautiful space held for you throughout the course. So you, you have this connection and then there's beautiful you um, inspiration days where you get to meet in person in different places around the world. So no matter where you are, there's people in America, Canada, um, Europe, the UK, of course, Australia, because that's where the course is based um, all over the world like all over the world because it is it's a unique course it really is the the style is different the focus is different it's really beautiful it's for a particular type of person and so if you are listening to this podcast I'm sure that 
it will probably be one that fits for you too. But of course, you've got to go with what your intuition says. So wherever you decide to train, if you do decide to train, you'll end up in the right place. And all I can do is just let you know about my experience and why I took it, what I've learned and what I loved about it. Um, And also, you know, just and, and really just share with you from my heart what really lit me up about the course and I've got to say so before I told you that there was I had five months to wait before my course started and I'd already started my website and my business and I started coaching already and I was invited to lunch with Julie and some of the beautiful you coaches while she was over here in London when I went to that lunch so it was a couple of months after I'd signed up and I still had you know I think four months until my course started oh my gosh so I turn up I don't know anyone and I just felt oh actually sorry I did know one person but I felt like I was at home it was so gorgeous all of these people that I was meeting who had the same aspirations and dreams as I did even if we wanted to work on different issues or with different people really at the core of it, we all had the same drive behind us in, you know, just wanting to make a difference in people's lives and, and to really see the beauty and, you know, create a life that is beautiful. I had that name just drop in way before I even just heard about the Beautiful You Coaching Academy. So I think (laughs) that should have been, you know, that, that was a pretty obvious sign that this would be a perfect fit for me. But if I was, if there was any doubt when I went to that, I walked out and I remember I sent my friend, actually Caitlin, a voice message. And I just said, this was the most incredible experience ever. I had goosebumps all over me. I just knew I was on the right track and it was so incredibly just amazing. And the other significant moment was when I received my course materials and I opened it up and I saw that this bit about self-actualization, about, you know, coaching and through the academy being a focus on helping move a person towards self-actualization. That for me was so powerful because when I learned about self-actualization, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, when I was 16 or 17, I was still in school. My teacher, Mr. Hamilton taught me, who was amazing, one of my lights. Uh, He said, uh, sorry, in that moment, I knew It was important that that was an important concept for me and that it was something that I wanted to be working towards. You know, I I was like, okay, I got to get there. And one of the ways was I really wanted to find work that would be a meaningful contribution and make me feel, you know, it was purposeful. So I was always searching for this purpose through my career. That was really important for me since I was in high school. And then to finally find it and to open up that course you know, 11 years later, 12 years later, something like that, and see those words and to find that I was just in where I was always meant to be was one of the most profound and beautiful experiences of my life. It truly was. Now, lastly, one of the things I also loved about the course is that it takes you through a coaching process and how, and, you know, becoming a life coach, but also setting up your business. So you go through, you know, running events, how to run events, how to run retreats, how to have business partnerships, how to have, you know, great relationships with others, how to do group coaching programs, online courses, um, just like so many other things and, you know, marketing, all of these, it's it's got it all in the course, which is very rare. A lot of coaching programs, as far as I'm aware, don't include this part. So that was so helpful. So if you've not even started, you know, you don't have a website. I was an anomaly having my website already created and also, you know, working in the area really met most, most of the people well, people who take the course are all in terms of experience are all over the place. You've got some people who've been coaching before, some who are coming from other careers that are related, some who've got no experience. So like there's, it's really something for everyone, which is really nice. And you're encouraged to, to adopt a beginner's mindset, which we all should, no matter what we're learning, because otherwise you won't take in what's there for you. So you get that, plus you get 
loads of templates and worksheets that you actually can use with clients and ongoing. So it's, it's really wonderful and supportive. Okay. So geez, I didn't expect this to be such a long episode, but it looks like it is. (laughs) I think that this is going to be really beneficial though. So I will continue. All right. So who do I see life coaching for as in, as a career? (laughs) Well, definitely you want to help others. You want to make a difference. You love people. You're curious because you want to be curious about people. You want to be curious about, you know, life, human behavior. You love learning. You're encouraging. You want to serve or you like serving other people. And also you're open to running a business because you'll need to run a business if you're working as a coach. Now, If you're someone who hears this and thinks, well, I just don't have what it takes to run a business. I don't think that I can do it. I would challenge that because you've really got to give yourself the benefit of the doubt. There are so many people who would have thought that they would never be their own boss, that they just couldn't do it. And I think it's this, you can approach your business with a lot of hustle or you can approach your business in a really heart-centered way that supports you and for the women out there that supports you as a woman, you know, is respectful of your body and of our fluctuating hormones, which we have throughout a month. And you have the power to create whatever you want. I think actually for women, running your own business is a really wonderful opportunity that we've all got now. Because it really does give us the freedom that we need, you know, if you want to have children or you've got children to be able to build your schedule around what suits, what suits you and also to show up in the ways that suit you. You know, there's so much flexibility and freedom. You don't have to be on Instagram, for instance, if you don't want to, you go where you like to hang out and you can do a lot of stuff in person. It doesn't have to be all online. So there are so many ways to run a business, but to do it, I I do think you've got to be open to it. So you've just got to recognize that, yeah, you'll want to coach people, but you'll also have to market your services and all of that. And this is something we also talk about in next week's episode with Julie. So who do I think the beautiful You Coaching Academy is for? It's definitely for you if you want a beautiful, supportive community behind you. One that is going to support you in collaborating And actually, for example, you know, one of my coaching buddy, Ange and I, we're running an event together. We're actually running a series of events together. So you have all of these opportunities to collaborate within the community. It's really amazing. It's also for you do value this feminine energy as well, you know, masculine and feminine, this balanced approach, but also this feminine approach, this heart centered, soulful approach approach to coaching and if you want the business and coaching component. Now, as I said, I'd already set up my business before I started, but I still learned a ton when I did the course, a a ton, because it's specific to life coaching and you get a lot of different perspectives of people and how they run their business. So that is definitely not something to be overlooked. And it's also a course for people who, like some people take it for their own personal development and growth. So if that's you and you're just really interested in learning more about self-development and growth, you might also be interested in doing the course. I know that that sings out to a number of people who have taken the course. They don't know whether they're actually going to do become a life coach or work as a coach or actually some people don't work as a coach they use it to help them in their career you know another skill that they're learning for that Um, you get a lot of people who have been nurses so there's there's lots of ways to use it you can use the course um, for in, in whatever way it's calling to you for not just as you know a traditional life coach in the way that I've been talking about it today you will know trust your intuition and yeah remember I will have a video that's going to give you more specific practical information about the course uh, in the next couple of days so if you want that the best place to be alerted about that is 
is probably to sign up for my newsletter if you're not already on uh, my newsletter list that you can do that by going to letitiarange.com forward slash community and just um, enter in your name and email address there and you will get that when it comes out. Okay, so I also wanted to talk to you about what life looks like as a coach, because I know that there's going to be a lot of you who really wants to know, okay, yeah, that all sounds great, but what's it actually like? Well, I can only tell you what life looks like for me. And so I'll go through that. But remember that it is different for everyone. There are so many ways to work. And it's so great because you get to be creative and imaginative and come up with whatever, you know, you download or whatever you're inspired to do. So basically, I see clients over Skype or Zoom or in person. So if they're based in London or if I'm where they are, you know, I'm traveling through, I can see them in person. Otherwise, it's on Skype or Zoom and it's just as good as in person. And in fact, a lot of people prefer it because you are in the comfort of your own home and we're talking about personal stuff. So usually, so I have one-to-one coaching, so clients that I see, and then I also run an online course which is Embrace Your Feminine Essence. And as I've mentioned, there'll be um, other courses that I'll be running. And obviously I have lots of different ideas, but I go with what inspires me in the moment. So this is, it's a work in progress. You can also run social media groups. So on Facebook, or you might have, I don't know, other platforms that you use, but you can also use social media to talk with your community, to teach them, to share tips, to connect, to be inspired. It's really fabulous for that. So a a significant amount of time is having a presence online because That's where you're connecting with people. It's like back in the day, people would go to maybe networking or more events, more and and networking uh, events, but you can do this on social media. So you just think of it as, oh, wow, I've got, you know, I've got how, how many people in my, my, on this platform in my community and I get to, you know, share my voice here and connect with them and learn more about these people. And how awesome is that? Another significant part of what I do is creating content. So that could be blogs, it could be newsletters, it could be a video, the podcast, of course, as well. And then events. I mean, there are endless options for events, workshops, retreats. People combine their life coaching practice with their yoga practice, with their meditation practice, with Reiki. You name it. There are so many, you know, I'm trained as a theta healer. So I can combine those as well. Like there's just so many, you might, if you're someone who likes a whole variety of things, you can keep, you know, adding different tools to use so you can be switching between them and then creating events around that or products or content all around using those. So yeah, events are amazing. And as you'll know, I recently ran the first of this one of of the first circle I've run to date, but there are going to be many more because this is something that has been really calling me for over a year. I feel so at home in this space and I really love connecting with people in person and in the form of a circle. I think it's the most like sacred space. It's so beautiful. So yes, you can run circles too. I did a new moon ritual. That was my first one um, and it was so powerful, so amazing. And so I got to, you know, use my life coaching skills about intention setting, also my skills with meditation and, you know, create this beautiful ritual for a group of people to come and connect. And so that's, I mean, the options are endless. You can speak at events, you can create all different products, digital products, eBooks, courses, as I mentioned before, all sorts of things. And I just think that it's particularly so amazing for women because it allows us to really use many of those gifts that we might have shut off in like the corporate world that might be considered feminine, but really it's just feminine energy that we all have regardless of gender. So things like our intuition and discussion, connection, community, collaboration, feelings, empathy, talking, emotional intelligence, All of these things are so important in coaching that you get to use it and they actually 
that that's what you're relying on. So it's a really beautiful option, I think, particularly for women, but there are definitely, there is a need for more male coaches as well. And, you know, some people, they go on news programs, they go and talk in schools, you know, work with different organizations. It's the options are literally endless. So that's what my life is like. It's, you know, I've got my hands in all these different things. I just do what inspires me, what my community is telling me that they need, what's coming up at the time as, you know, issues for people and you can create things to help them, to support them. And also, of course, provide this beautiful space that can be in groups or one to one. And yeah, that's what that's what life looks like as a coach. Now I wanted to, I've got two more sections and then we will wrap this up, but I wanted to let you know signs that you're a secret life coach or a life coach in the making. So here they are. Friends ask for your advice, coaching in your current role. You know, maybe are you coaching or mentoring people in the role that you have at work or in your home, mums, dads, I'm looking at you, you know, are you helping get people from A to B to, to help them improve their skills. Have you worked as a mentor? Are you working as a mentor in work or personally? You know, maybe it's not a formal thing. Uh, have you volunteered as a mentor? Did you enjoy it? Have you got a background working with people? And now I'm looking at people in HR, you know, human resources. Great. You're, you're probably going to love coaching or maybe you're working in management definitely need to be able to coach there if well if you're a good manager you need coaching skills and has the best part of your career like mine be in the opportunities you get to be around people to relate to people if if that's what you love then maybe that's a sign that you're a secret life coach do you have an interest in human behavior and understanding people are you inspired by people who work in the life coaching industry you know are, do you have expanders that when you hear them talk about you know whatever issue it is or about self development in general does that inspire you do you think oh my gosh i would love to learn more about this i would love to talk about my experience Do you have an interest in personal development or spirituality? Are you passionate about helping people? Do you want to make a difference? Do you consider yourself a light worker? You know, there's so many different modalities that help us like like yoga, which, you know, I love yoga, meditation, Reiki, kinesio. Like there's just so many different light worker roles. And also, you know, parents, come on, they are definitely... They have a light worker role, you know, if you're a great mom or dad and you love working with people and helping them, you know, nurture them and move them forward, maybe coaching's for you as well. Do you like to be a positive role model for others? And do you want to see others shine and grow? This is something that's on the Beautiful You Coaching website about shine and grow. And I just loved it. I just think that's so true because you, you got to be someone who likes to see other people do well, right? If it's something, if you're, if you're not going to be inspired by seeing other people grow and shine and progress, then maybe it's not for you. But if you love that, if you think that would give you so much joy to see that, yeah, life coaching might just be for you too. Okay, finally, some common misconceptions that you must be perfect before you can be a life coach. OMG, I know that this is one that many, many, many people feel and that stops so many of us. Before I started, I felt the same way. I've got to be perfect first. And then I thought, well, I am perfect. And, you know, you're never perfect. Okay, it's not going to happen. We're not perfect. We go through our life learning and learning and learning if you're lucky. You're unlucky if you're not learning. So it's never going to happen. You're never going to reach this stage where you feel like you're perfect. That's the truth of it. And people want to work with you because you've been there, because you understand what they're going through. That is what someone wants more than anything. 
So you only need to be a couple of steps ahead to be able to help. And actually, in many ways, that is more helpful because you aren't so removed from what the person has been experiencing. So please don't wait for perfection. It won't come. You've definitely got enough experience, life experience, no matter where you are to work as a life coach. I just recommend building up your confidence by doing something like training as a coach. Another misconception is that you need to be extroverted. You'll notice I never once mentioned that you need to be extroverted and that is for a reason. Some of the most powerful coaches would classify themselves as an introvert. Okay, it's actually got nothing to do with it. You might get trained by people easily. That's okay. The way that you would structure your business is that you would have more time to yourself to recharge, right? Maybe you'll do more things where you'll create more, you know, passive products where you're not doing so much one-to-one, or maybe you just won't do as many group things. This is fine. Extroversion, introversion is a spectrum anyway. We've all got a bit of both in us. I am actually someone who finds myself in lots of situations quite introverted and then in others extroverted and the thing is most of the time and if you're a good coach what you want to be doing most of the time is listening this is something that is a really important point made throughout the beautiful you coaching course and it's something that I've experienced and seen people do wrong when they call themselves a coach You want your client to be finding the answers within themselves. It's not as helpful or powerful if you're telling them what they need to do. If you're just giving them all of the advice and you're not allowing them to reach that conclusion themselves. And this is like, think about it with kids. You know, when if you're a kid or if you've got kids, when you're told what to do, you just don't want to do it then or You don't make the effort to actually experience it. And it's because people need to go through that process themselves. So all of the learning, all of the lessons come through what a client is able to discover about themselves with your guidance through the space created and the powerful questions that you ask that leads the client back to themselves. But There is actually a lot of talking done by the client more than you and should be. And if you're finding yourself doing all of the talking while coaching, then you might want to think about focusing more on listening because you learn so much by listening, by watching the signs that, you know, we can't see in ourselves. So as a coach, you you can see this in your client, be able to help them see that just in their body language, for instance, or the way they're communicating in the silence. It's, it's not, it's not about speaking. So just, I just want to say that because if you're a bit shy or you class yourself as an introvert, then you might think that just coaching isn't for you. And there is something really powerful about a quiet confidence anyway. So please don't think that it that would be why you're not suited to coaching. Um, another misconception is that it's masculine dominated and or like this, you know, it's that very corporate focus and it it's not heart centered at all. I, as I've explained that there are so many different styles of coaching and so you've just got to find the right one for you. Every person has their own style. But there is definitely some beautiful feminine heart-centered coaching and ones that are really beautiful for women in particular, and I think also for men. Um, But that's just part of the industry. That's where its roots are. And if you want to know more, definitely check out next week's episode with Julie because she goes into this and, you know, she's seen it firsthand, the changes in the industry. And lastly, that, you know, coaches are know-it-alls or just telling clients what to do. As I mentioned before, that it's just not the case. You will definitely support your client by um, having a process and and knowing maybe options for steps for them and and offering those if they want them. Um, But your client should be doing most of the speaking and most of the learning and discovering it themselves. So you're facilitating a space more than anything with your beautiful guidance and questions. And 
you're certainly not a know-it-all. And in fact, uh, that won't actually help the client in a lot of ways. So you're there holding space for another person. You're motivating them, seeing their gifts, their beauty, helping to guide them which is difficult for us to see when we're so close to all the detail, you're a great mirror of their light. Ah, Okay, my beautiful friend. So if you're someone who wants to help people and you'd love to help people realize their dreams, then life coaching might be for you too. It is truly such rewarding work. You're helping to create positive, conscious and high vibe change in the world, which we love here at Create a Life That Is Beautiful. So think to yourself, what life experiences have you been through? What issues would you be great at supporting someone else through? And have a think what comes up. Lastly, I want to leave you with a mindset shifter. Think of the people you can help rather than your own fears. This is so helpful uh, when we are feeling like I'm not good enough. I can't do it. People are going to think I'm silly. But what about that person that you could actually help by sharing your story, by sharing what's worked for you? What about that one person? If you knew that something that you were going to say or do for another person would change their life, how would that make you behave now? I also want to leave you with a quote and it's one from Rumi and it's also one I heard on Queer Eye for the Straight Guy which I'm loving at the moment. Thanks mum for the recommendation and the quote is let the beauty of what you love be what you do. I just think this is so gorgeous and this is just so aligned with everything that I teach in my own work. You know we get to do what we love That's important. That's how we all evolve as a community and contribute at our best. So if you're interested in learning more, make sure you check out my page, Become a Coach, LetitiaRinge.com forward slash Become a Coach. Keep an eye out for my video, which you will get alerted to if you subscribe to my newsletter at LetitiaRinge.com forward slash community. It's the best place to be notified anyway about all of my events, new content. So head on over there and sign up if that feels good to you. And if you want to chat, remember, you can send me an email to Letitia at LetitiaRinge.com and we'll set up a time for a chat. Now, if Beautiful You Coaching Academy course sounds like the right course for you, remember that I am offering a generous bonus when you enroll for the course through me and the details you'll find on the Become a Coach page to basically you'll receive the opportunity to work with me for free over three months one to one. So check that out and keep an eye out for next week's episode too. Now, I just wanted to give you first a, before we close up, a little life update. At the moment, you probably know by now that we're in the season of Virgo. And on Friday, I ran my first new moon circle, which also drew on this energy in Virgo. I really love uh, following astrology. I feel really deeply connected. So I just take what resonates for me and feels good and let it sort of guide my theme of my intentions and also the content I create. So this Virgo actually rules my day-to-day working life, which is why things can get a little crazy over here. I'm also a Capricorn. And so the Virgo energy is really about getting organized and focused. But what we want to focus on during this time because of that and what the Virgo asks us to do, the Virgo is about the actually the sacred feminine, the mother, the goddess, the healer, the teacher, which is perfect for today's episode. What this Virgo energy asks us to look to is accepting and loving ourselves unconditionally, focusing on self-love and yes, planning and getting organized and showing up for our work in the world and our purpose, but doing it aligned with our intuition. So planning from the intuition and to be able to do that, we've got to make sure that we are clearing out all of the junk. So you'll probably have heard a lot about purging and releasing and cleansing. This is really important when it, whether it's our health. So the food that we're eating, whether it's our exercise, whether it's, you know, doing a nice spring clean in our wardrobe, which I'm totally doing. 
And um, or maybe it's, you know, just decluttering your life in general. This is important because the Virgo energy is about resetting our foundation, very similar to Capricorn. So it's a great time to just, okay, what do I need to let go of? What do I need to release? And then how am I showing up for myself in this really loving way, really accepting who I am and planning from my intuition? All righty. So. If you are based in London and want to know more about my new moon rituals or and I also have some women's circles coming up here in London, I'm also considering an online option to make sure you're signed up for the newsletter. I also have an event coming up in London on the 22nd of September for the Equinox. And this is called the flow series. It's about flowing with the seasons. So we'll also be tapping into the energy of the outer season now that we're moving into autumn and you will have yoga, meditation and different, you know, beautiful coaching exercises that help you connect to yourself and your intentions for the season. And I'm running that with Ange, my She was my buddy in the course and she is a yoga teacher. So I'm so excited to use, you know, my knowledge of the seasons and for us to come up with a really beautiful space for you all to join. So if you know anyone who might be interested, who lives in London, please let them know. You can go to LeticiaRinge.com forward slash shop forward slash flow to book your spot. Uh, Okay, now I would love to hear from you. Are you a life coach? If so, what do you love about being a life coach? Or are you interested in becoming a life coach? And who would you love to work with? As in, what people would you love to serve? Or are you interested in working with a life coach? If you are, feel free to reach out and ask me any questions you have. I also wanted to know, I am actually now looking for a new theme song for the podcast. I do love my song, but I've had a calling to find something that is a little bit more feminine, soft, peaceful, calming, and of course, beautiful. And so, yes, I'm looking for a new theme song. So if anyone can point me in the direction of someone who might be able to help me or maybe, you know, a platform that they use, I would love to hear from you because I want this song to be something for all of us and the community that we have here. I would also love to know if we have any male listeners. Definitely let me know. But no matter who you are, I would love to hear from you. I love just every time I hear from someone on the podcast or through my newsletter on Instagram, Facebook, it's so wonderful. You can get in touch via email, Letitia at LetitiaRinge.com or on Instagram at Create a Life That Is Beautiful. Now for the card, the the card. Oh my gosh. So I pulled the card of Ishel. So Ishel, it's actually spelled I-X-C-H-E-L and it's pronounced Ishel or Ishel according to the book. And she's the medicine woman. She says, you are a channel for divine healing power. Now I won't read the whole thing to you, but what is really beautiful is this part of it. Don't waver for a moment in your sure and steady decision to be a conduit of the power that already resides within within you. Connect to the even bigger source and allow it to amplify your natural power. In this way, you're a steady connector to the infinite, from the infinite and to the infinite. In other words, it's all spirit around you, through you and to whomever you're healing. And one of the various meanings of the card is to honor your healing knowledge and abilities, learn about healing, teach the healing arts start or continue your healing practice I mean how special is that wow and so she's actually a a moon goddess so I will you know what I'll give you and so you can connect to your foundational roots as a spiritual healer that's what she can help you connect with anyway I will send this around Uh, I'll put this on Instagram in my story so you can check out the full description of it and I'll also potentially include a photograph in my next newsletter all right my friend that is it the show notes for this episode can be found at letitiaringe.com 
forward slash life coach. If you enjoyed this episode, please have a think and see if this might be a great episode to share with one of your friends, maybe someone that you think would be a fab coach or someone who wants to know more about coaching all the beautiful you coaching Academy. I love this podcast of always to spread through word of mouth. And so if you haven't already, I would so appreciate you rating and reviewing the podcast on iTunes. Make sure you do send me an email to let me know if you do that so I can reach out and thank you. I also send out a newsletter which goes out roughly once a week and includes my latest content and also inspiration that you won't find anywhere else. So you can sign up at latisharange.com forward slash community. Thank you so much for listening. Tune in next week to hear Julie Parker, the CEO and founder of the Beautiful You Coaching Academy, talk about life coaching, the academy, and what makes a great coach. Have a wonderful week and see you next week for another episode to help you unlock your truth and purpose. Satnam. 